so much. Welcome to the Frank Irwin Special Event Center. We've got a good one brewing here, and it seems that every time Kansas and Texas get together, particularly in the last two to three years, friend, that these are the kind of games that they have played as Abrams squishes a three. A.J. Abrams is the key to Texas. He's only 5'11", but you cannot leave him open. Quickest release in college basketball. Chalmers, nice job by Johnson of cutting off the lane. Three-pointer, Russell Robinson. Robinson coming off a 22-point performance against Baylor. Seven different Jayhawks have led this team in scoring this season. Actually, for three. He's got six quick points, two three-pointers. The key to Texas is they can get everybody else involved. Chalmers back to Sasha Khan. Back door, beautifully handled. Darnell Jackson right there. Ron, they're as, yeah, they're as good in, as anybody in the country at throwing that pass. They're so unselfish. I'm sorry. No, no, no. No trouble. That, it, they just do a, such a great job getting the bigs free. And no matter where they are, they're such great athletes. They take it right to the hoop. Welcome to ESPN Big Monday, presented by Bud Light, all a part of Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco. It's number three, the Jayhawks of Kansas, taking on the 11th-ranked Texas Longhorns from the Irwin Special Events Center. These two rivals, the last time uh, that they have gotten together has been in the championship game of the Big 12 Conference. That first one in 2006 was won by the Jayhawks. And although Kevin Durant had 37 points, too much rush and too much Collins for the Jayhawks. And they not only won in overtime over the Longhorns, but they also secured a number one seed in the tournament. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin uh, alongside Fran Frischella. Holly Rowe will be along in just a little bit. Both of these teams sit in the number one and the number three spots. They are obviously big guys again. What separates them? What's the difference between these two teams? I think the difference, Ron, is when you look at Kansas, they've had seven different players lead them in scoring this year. And while Texas is very guard-oriented with Augustine and Abrams, if they can get actually and James and Johnson involved in the offense tonight, it would give Rick Barnes a huge lift. And in our Star Watch, which is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Uh, Darrell Arthur, if he stays on the floor and out of foul trouble, he's an offensive weapon. And DJ Augustine may be the best point guard in the country, but this is the most important player to their offense, A.J. Abrams, a scoring machine. Let's take one more look at the standings in the Big 12. Kansas at 8-1, then comes K-State. We will be watching him on Wednesday night out on the South Lane against Texas Tech. Texas is at 6-2, and two, and then you see there's a log jam after that. The Aggies are there. Also, Baylor, who played KU extremely tough up in Lawrence on Saturday evening, 100-90. to 90. And I'm trying to remember the last time somebody went into Lawrence and put 90 on that side of the scoreboard. It doesn't happen very often. No, Baylor's guards are very good. And another unique thing about that game, Kansas scored 100 points, and they went 0-9 for 9 from the three-point line. Bill, uh, Bill Self was addressing that today, saying that uh, that is something that I hope we never have to have that situation again. So we scored a lot of twos. A lot of twos, a lot of layups. <laughs> That's not all bad either. Keys in this ball game, uh, we have talked about, you know, the physical difference between these two teams. Kansas obviously would very quickly get the best of that match right there. But the finesse players, as far as Texas is concerned, they can even out a lot of things. And in fact, let's check in with Hollywood. Oh, Holly. Well, guys, people are really starting to get their first extended look at Texas freshman Gary Johnson. He sat out the first nine games after an unspecified heart condition was diagnosed. He had a career-high 34 minutes in their last game, and guys, he's already on the floor for them. They need a big post presence, but not only has they overcome the heart problems, guys, he's playing with two broken bones in his nose. He'll need surgery at the end of the season. He's not playing with the mask, because he said it just felt too uncomfortable. Well, Kansas got the matchup that they wanted. They wanted one of the bigs handling the basketball. And Gary Johnson at the other end is breathing a sigh of relief because after turning it over, he came down and got the rebound. You see, Justin Mason will handle the ball more tonight. That'll take a little heat off of D.J. Augustine. Gary Johnson strong to the hoop, and he will score it. 
Trying to jump into the rotation in January is very difficult, particularly for a freshman. He's just getting his legs under him. Sharon Collins into the ball game, as you can see, number four for Kansas. Rush, he'll take it along the baseline, holds up, and can't get it to go, and Sasha Khan, nobody blocked him out, and he comes along and cleans it up with the jam. And credit Brandon Rush for having this soft touch as that ball kissed up on the rim, giving Khan a chance to attack it. Three-point Texas lead, as we are now under 15 minutes to play in the first half. Mason, bounce pass along the baseline, Gary Johnson, and an offensive foul is called on Gary Johnson. That was close. Jackson is down. Let's take a look. Does Darnell Jackson establish himself before Johnson leaves his feet? And that's close. That's about as close as you can get. I don't think he got there. So Johnson with two broken bones in his nose and Darnell Jackson who could easily be called the most improved player in the Big 12 conference this year goes to the bench and they are looking at that left ankle. Back door Abrams anticipates and makes the steal. Abrams 4-3. Here comes Chalmers. Into Sasha Khan, works against Gary Johnson. Jump hook, not there. Darrell Arthur on the follow, and he gets the return to go. And Darrell Arthur, the leading scorer for this team of just under 14, but he only plays 23 minutes a game because he gets himself in foul trouble. Alexi, one many, checks into the ball game for the Texas Longhorns, number 15. He is a freshman, 6'7", 241, from Cameroon. Mason and Chalmers is going to be called for hands. Darrell Arthur establishes himself on the weak side. Take a look now. He'll get himself wedged underneath. That's where he is. He knows 70% of the time that miss from the left side is going to come off right to his spot. He does a good job of locating his body. Well, that foul was on Chalmers. That's his second. So you got one regular on the bench with an injury to his ankle, and Chalmers with two fouls. And is unconscious tonight. Comes he in shooting 48%, Ron, and that shot was challenged. Collins and Mason is going to be called for the defensive foul. That is his first. Connor actually 49%. Now watch this quick release. This is a terrific job by Arthur to get back to the shot, but he doesn't bother the shooting motion, and that's great concentration. You know, the interesting thing, Brandon Rush, no points. I'm not sure he's shot yet, has he? He's taken that one shot that Con followed. Inside, actually, with the block. Actually, so far playing the game of his young life. This is a guy that Rick Barnes, when he first saw him, wanted him to walk on. Air ball put up by Abrams. Out on the wing. This is Collins, and he will rush it to the hoop. And the tip right there by Brandon Rush. So he's on the board at the 12-17 mark. And what's critical about Sharon Collins is Kansas scores over 86 times, 16 times this year, but they've only done it once on the road at Boston College. He gives them that fast break opportunity. into Gary Johnson. Gets Khan off his feet, takes it to the hoop, and Khan will pick up the foul. You know, well, Connor actually so far has been the story for the Texas Longhorns. Nine quick points, and also the block underneath. We'll be right back. Basketball is presented by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. And in part by Gone Baby Gone. Own it on DVD and Blu-ray High Def February 12th. And K Jewelers. Every kiss begins with K. 
have a good look at the tower here on the 40 acres. 20 to 18 our score. The Texas Longhorns leading by a couple. And we are just about at the midway point of the first half. Any surprises so far? Well, the biggest thing is getting actually involved in the offense is critical, Ron. You know, Rick Barnes gave me a little heat for calling his offense one-dimensional. And it can be with Abrams and Augustine handling so much of the load. But if you go back to the Tennessee game in November when they knocked off Tennessee, Rick Barnes had four different guys scoring 20 points that night, including Connor Atchley. Well, as we see the, uh, the Kansas uh, players coming back out on the floor for the KU faithful, uh, good news for you. Darnell Jackson, he's walking gingerly, but he is back out on the floor, and that is indeed good news. Johnson. Gary Johnson will uh, go to the line. This young man with a couple key buckets on Saturday up in uh, Ames as they escape the Cyclones. You know, one of the assistant coaches uh, said yesterday that uh, since the broken nose, he has shot free throws better, <laughs> and they're kind of hoping. <laughs> He will leave it alone because I don't know if it helped the site if he has a guide mark or what. <laughs> well, when it starts to heal, you need to pop him again if he keeps making his free throws. <laughs> Darnell Jackson just ran down the court and looked as though there was not even a grimace. This is Collins against Augustine. And they tried to post rush on Abrams, didn't do it. Arthur over Ashley. Well, tomorrow night at ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern, Michigan State will take on the Boilermakers of Purdue. And then at 9 o'clock in the Southeastern Conference, it'll be the Wildcats of Kentucky against the Vanderbilt Commodores. Super Tuesday, presented by KFC on ESPN. Ashley picks up the foul. It's his first. Well, speaking of Michigan State, Ron, tomorrow night you'll see one of those guys I call a hybrid forward, Raymar Morgan. Damian James, one of those guys as well, Tyler Smith. Guys that can post you up and also are very comfortable playing away from the basket. Mason goes to the bench to a good round of applause, and it means that Pittman will check in. Dexter, a sophomore, 6'10", 299 pounds, and I think we documented the story uh, over the first of this year and all last year, and the fact that the young man lost over 70 pounds. He is a big man now. He was a huge man when he came to the University of Texas. You know he's got great hands and very explosive for his size. See now, Arthur scores it. He's got six. And now Augustine will handle the ball some. Early in the game, Rick Barnes took him off and let him uh, catch his breath off screens. Gary Johnson looking inside to Pittman. Then a screen out high from Ashley on uh, Russell Robinson. And Augustine will take it to the hoop, partially blocked. Gary Johnson comes down with the rebound. Three-pointer, not there. Ashley comes away with the basketball. Now it's on the floor. And stolen. Stolen again, and who knocked it out of bounds? Man, it was like a pinball machine there for a moment. Texas had it, then KU had it. More quick hands out there than pickpockets at Times Square. Take a look at this now. This looks like a Kansas fast break, but watch A.J. Abrams knock it loose, and then Robinson knocks it out of bounds. A little pressure on the inbounds pass as Russell Robinson tried to cross him up a little bit, stayed down, and uh, did intimidate some. Actually, obviously, the shiner that he is sporting has not bothered his shooting eye tonight as he's got nine early points. Pittman dishes the ball off to Gary Johnson. Stolen. Russell Robinson thrown over to Rush, and it's going to be a travel on Russell Robinson. Robinson stole the ball, was in the air, and waited for a Jayhawk to get open. But by the time they did, his foot hit the floor. Bill Self does not agree. <laughs> does not agree with the call. That's Scott Thornley, who is tonight's referee of the two umpires tonight, Curtis Shaw and Steve Wilmer. Veteran crew in the Big 12. Pick and roll defense critical tonight. Rush. I 
believe will be called for the foul on Augustine. Yes, it is. DJ Augustine, who struggled Saturday, could not get it going. Three of 18 at one point, but uh, made a critical shot in overtime. Take a look at his numbers, particularly down the stretch when he was uh, very important. But A.J. Abrams, 25 points, Ron, seven threes. The fourth time this year he's made seven or more. You know, Fran, off the top of the telecast tonight, I thought you made a really, really great point in the fact that Rick Barnes had uh, Mason bringing the ball up, trying to take some of the pressure off Augustine. And I think as far as mentally that the kid is a little tired because there has been uh, so much pressure on him. As Darnell Jackson missed on the slam, and it is going to stay with the Kansas Jayhawks. Well, this is a good high low. Texas switches to the zone, which they like to do. And you see a great look inside and actually comes across from the weak side and gets another block shot. Sharon Collins with the inbounds pass. Darnell Jackson on the run, and he got it. Great shooter's touch. Well, really soft. Nice job of controlling his body. Six points for him now, friend. Abrams holds up, 15-footer, and again, a soft touch at this end. Well, Kansas is going to try to chase him off the three-point line, but the improvement in his game is he's now shooting near 60% from two, and he's got seven points. Arthur, Darrell Arthur swishes it. This is a big night for him. He is a Texas youngster, and I know that he's got friends and family that have come down from the Dallas area. Yes, sir. South Oak Cliff High School played in a state championship team. For James Mays. Falling away. Augustine not there, and it's going to be one and out. And it went off of Gary Johnson. A.J. Abrams has got such a great release that you got to play him on that three-point line. But watch him use the dribble to create some separation. He knocks down the soft 12-footer. Two-three zone again. Yes, Rick Barnes likes to do this. Brandon Rush feeds it off wide open and he got it. Now Arthur quickly with 10 points already at double figures at the 854 mark. What's so impressive Ron is the way Kansas moves the basketball. Well that ball is blocked by Brandon Rush and Texas is going to steal it right back. And we've seen Brandon Rush from that guard spot block a lot of shots in his career. By the way, speaking of Brandon, second game that he has gone without the knee brace from the surgery that he had uh, early last year. Three-pointer Abrams. Good heavens. You cannot give him any space. He's got ten. So Abrams and Arthur... <laughs> may be at the top of the alphabet, but they're at the top of the scoring mark right now as they have started off red, red hot. Arthur, not there. Ball tipped by Khan, and it comes back out to Collins. I don't know how you feel about this, but this is a very well-played basketball game so far. I feel like you're in the Big 12 championship game. Yeah, it, it really does have that atmosphere as Abrams comes down with a rebound. And I mean this crowd, everybody's still standing. Nobody has sat down yet. Inside, Augustine, not there, touched last by Texas. A.J. Abrams doesn't need much room. You cannot leave him even a crack. Kansas point coaches say he's got the quickest release in the country. You judge. Players ever. Number 20, Bob Curley. Three-time All-American, two-time NCAA Tournament Most Outstanding Player, two national championships, and one dunk. In 1946, the seven-foot Bob Curlin was the first player to dunk in a game. IBM, getting it done. Well, a reminder, we're going to count down the top 25 every night of college basketball, and we're going to announce the number one player of all time.
during the North Carolina Duke game, and that is on March the 8th. And I know Bob Kerwin always felt that he, you were one of his favorite announcers, Ron, <laughs> back in the old big, big seven days. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Get back under the table. <laughs> Oh, here, there's one of the guys that has to be one of the top 25, wouldn't uh, you think, I Danny would, Manning? I would think so, yep. Uh, one of the great players in Kansas history. Grant, here are some numbers on some very important players in this ballgame. Augustine has four points, but everything's from the free throw line. He is 0 for 6 from the field and then rush. Two points and one of four from the field. Holly Rowe, let's check with you. Well, guys, Rick Barnes in his Texas huddle has just talked to two young players that's put in the lineup, Clint Chapman and Alexa. One mini. He said, guys, I'm gonna give you some minutes here, but I have to have defense and rebounding. Guys, these guys don't play a lot. He's taking a chance putting these two young guys in there together. Well, they got a play out of one mini there for a moment as he got a block. Aldrich is the man who will uh, since he is on the floor, credited with the basket. Another young player, McDonald's All-American, who's not in that Kansas rotation right now. Augustine has fouled it. That may be Aldridge. Yeah. Cole Aldridge, freshman, has to wait his turn behind Jackson and Con and Arthur, but has always done a solid job when called on. Ron, the one thing about playing Justin Mason at the point, the one negative is his man can be the free safety and help on Augustine and Abrams because he doesn't look for his shot as often. Well, the out of bounds pass finally uh, caught by Chapman. You know, there are some kids that are winded and, and really wet from perspiration already, and I think it goes back to what you were talking about. I mean, the atmosphere here, they are playing really hard, and it does have the feeling of a championship game. You know, both teams played Saturday. Of course, Sunday's a travel day for Kansas. Augustine all the way underneath back out to Mason and Mason falling away puts up an air ball Chapman is right there. One of those freshmen that uh, Holly Rowe just talked about Cliff Chapman from Canby Oregon. Rush for three. Got it. There's nobody better in the Big 12 when you give him some room other than maybe A.J. Abrams but uh, 44% on his career from three. We are tied with that three-point shot by Rush. 31-31 at the 6-10 mark. See, Ron, Rush can play the free safety at the foul line area. No look pass and what anticipation by Chalmers. Chalmers against Mason, missed it, and right there to clean it up is Brandon Rush. This is KU's first lead of this basketball game. Right now, you've got to get Abrams open off some screens. Augustine as well. Aldrich just picked up another foul. Wednesday on ESPN at 7 o'clock Eastern, the Duke Blue Devils take on the Maryland Terrapins. Wednesday Night Hoops is presented by Staples. Duke now up to number two in the country, led by Demarcus Nelson having a tremendous senior year. Darnell Jackson will check back into the lineup and Aldrich will uh, go to the bench. It, he just picked up his second foul and his head coach has walked over to talk to him right now. And uh, Bill Self just trying to say, you know, be smart, be smart. Uh, a foul that far away from the basket. <laughs> the man didn't have a prayer. Of, uh, of shooting you don't need to, to do that Mac Brown along with Aaron Ross uh, plays for the New York Giants played hurt separated shoulder brilliant down the stretch of that giant season and Vince Young played little quarterback here on the 40 acres for the national championship team also with attendance tonight for three a little too hard actually comes down with the rebound and Rick Barnes will live with that Robinson only 26 percent on the season Mason back to Augustine no Augustine boy Chalmers really giving him trouble three-pointer in and out wouldn't go and Jackson on the rebound for the Jayhawks Chalmers 
another spin move. Almost stolen by Abrams. Winds up in the hands of Jackson. And it's rebounded by Mason. What I'll tell you, Chalmers has hustled and hustled and hustled. Those quick hands have been really active tonight. And an offensive foul is called on D.J. Augustine. And just what you said, Ron, he did a terrific job. He couldn't poke it loose. So what he did was slide his body in front of Augustine. And D.J. in talking to the coaching staff has been a little bit unsure of himself the last couple games as to when to shoot it, when to drive it, and when to dish it. Well, the young man, you could tell, is, uh, is frustrated frustrated right now but like the play that he just came up with is not going to help him get out of his slump he's playing over 39 minutes a game in big 12 play Chalmers guarded by Abrams Sharon Collins drives it back out in the wing again good quick ball movement by the Jayhawks and Jackson will duck it home Ron no pun intended he's got eight but this is one of the most selfless if not the most selfless team in the country the ball moves like a uh, pinball machine Abrams back to Mason actually passed up the three one Manny puts it on the floor Lost it. It'll be Texas basketball. 16 seconds on the shot clock. So let's take a timeout. 3.30 or 3.35 left until halftime. And it is KU by two. Okay, Reese. Can't wait to hear it, my friend. By the way, tonight's telecast available on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia, live and in color. Ron Franklin, Fran Frischella, Holly Road, coming to you from the Frank Irwin Special Events Center in the capital city of the state of Texas, Austin. It's funny, Ron, you mentioned how well Mario Chalmers is playing. You look at his numbers, only one for two from the field, but you're exactly right. He makes so many things happen as he gets a little bit of breather right now. Meanwhile, Damian James, who we're looking at, uh, hit the, the quick basket, then got two quick fouls, and has only played three minutes in the first half. And I think right now he sat there enough where the sweat is dried, so you just leave him on the bench and just hope to stay close. Quick move by Augustine, too hard off the back iron, couldn't get it to go. And the lid stays on for him as far as shooting from the field tonight. Lob pass inside, Darrell Arthur. The ball is tipped and knocked out of bounds by Augustine. It'll be 23 seconds on the shot clock. And Texas will go 2-3 zone here. Kansas always puts in little wrinkles for every game, so you've got to stay alert. There's Rush. Augustine, by the way, 0 of 7 from the field. Sharon Collins. Left alone, Darnell Jackson. And boy, one of the things that he has improved so much on this year is he has 10 points. When he's squared up to the hoop like that, his shot has become almost deadly. Well, he spent all summer working on it at Oklahoma City College. It's Ray Harper's players. Actually, plenty of time. 4-3. It's his fourth of the night. This is where Texas needs to not be one-dimensional. Augustine doesn't have to score. Good look. Darrell Arthur. Two more, and he now has a dozen points. So to step aside for 30 seconds. 39-36 KU. Kansas with a three-point lead over Texas. Kansas getting a huge boost from senior Darnell Jackson. Guys, for three years, he has been a four-points-a-game guy. This year, nearly triple that. He spent all of the offseason losing weight, but more importantly, everything is okay with his family. You see his mom, Sean, there. She is finally healthy after a car accident that claimed the life of his grandmother a year and a half ago. Last year, Darnell almost quit the team, went home midseason because he was so overwhelmed with all the pressures that were affecting his family. But he says, finally, I am playing with a free mind. And, guys, it's showing up on the court more than ever. 
Jerry Johnson can't get the shot to go. Darnell told me today at uh, the shoot around that he has lost about 16 pounds and that he feels like he not only is more mobile, but he also has he, more stamina. 14 points now for Arthur. Along the baseline, that's going to be a foul. And that will be team foul number eight against KU. Did you ever think that a year ago that Sports Illustrated would do a feature story on Darnell Jackson? Featured last week. Great job by those guys and do such a great job of covering college basketball. Luke Wynn, Grant Wall, Seth Davis, and the crew. A second foul on Rush, so he goes to the bench. And Mason misses, but it is rebounded by Ashley. Abrams for three. Not there. And it's going to stay with Texas. Now, Abrams a little disgusted with himself. He doesn't miss that many of those open looks. Let me ask you something. Back to Darnell. Uh, a scout told me this weekend that if he continues at this pace, they say right now he's his second round draft choice, that he could be a late first round draft choice. Do you concur? You know, there's 30 first rounders. It's possible, Ron. It really is. Uh, he'll make money playing basketball. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And he'll get a long look by NBA team. So nice dish to Johnson. And he was fouled. I'll tell you, he grabbed at his nose. Somebody bumped him on that uh, broken nose that is broken in a couple of spots. DJ Augustine needs to be a distributor right now. Last three or four games, he's worried too much about his own offense. And if he can set up actually Johnson, James, and Abrams, his own offense will flow naturally. Well, I told you he was grimacing. Holly, you got more? Well, guys, the real uh, diagnosis on his nose, he has those two broken bones in his nose, and it's also dislocated. So imagine the uncomfortable that would be of a dislocated nose. Now, they tried to fit him with one of those custom plastic maps, masks that we see Rip Hamilton wear. He said it was just too uncomfortable. He didn't feel like he could play with it. But right now, look at his eyes. You can tell something's really going wrong with that nose. Stewart into the ball game, number five, the transfer from Southern California for the Jayhawks. Watch how well they move the ball here. Darnell Jackson not there. Sasha Khan rebounds, and Collins puts up a three, and he's off the mark. A.J. Abrams hustles for it, and it's going to go out of bounds. Collins went into the barrier at the scorer's table. Thank goodness that is a soft plastic. No, he's, a, he's a big guy. I don't think he's going to be okay, but... Well, there you go. Take a look at Gary Johnson. Boy, he is re he's really in some kind of pain. Now let's take a look at the timeline of the Big 12 Conference so far this year. Some of the big things that have happened. Well, tomorrow night at ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern, the Michigan State Spartans take on the Purdue Boilermakers. And at 9 o'clock Eastern, it's the Kentucky Wildcats facing the Vanderbilt Commodores. Super Tuesday, presented by KFC on ESPN. And Matt Painter has done a wonderful job at Purdue. He'll get some National Coach of the Year consideration for sure. Well, Fred Burnett is the uh, trainer for basketball for the Texas Longhorns, and uh, he has been over working with uh, Gary Johnson. And you know, Holly was talking about you could look at his eyes. When you get hit in your nose, particularly after it's been broken, you're gonna, the eyes are going to water just you can't stop it. And uh, you can tell he is really in some pain on that sideline. Looks like they've got uh, some quick work to do at halftime if to get him back in the game at all. Robinson gets it off to Khan. Sasha Khan can't get it to go. And on the follow, not there. And Darnell Jackson will go to the line. That foul is going to be on Chapman. He's first. Well, when you look at Kansas and the size inside, the perimeter strength as well. They get the shot on the glass. Khan keeps it alive. And Darnell Jackson making good use of his 250-pound frame. That one was almost a tired-looking free throw, wasn't it? 
missed the first one has another one coming trying to pick up his 11th point on the evening and he does Augustine will try to run it past Robinson loses the ball and it's going to stay with Texas okay, what he was trying to do Ron he was trying to get a shot up quickly so that Texas would get two possessions for one and he still may be able to do it but they're going to have to shoot it quick over the Jackson free throw four point ball game and that is the largest lead of the night. Thank you part five points was the biggest lead that they had. Augustine. Give and go and Chapman did not continue toward the basket. Freshman error there and Rick Barnes is going to get him out of the ball game right now. Twice on Saturday Ron Chapman was wide open from passes one from Augustine one from Abrams. He was not ready to catch the ball and that's why the, the disgust on Augustine's face on that look. Well here's the difficult thing as far as the bigs for Texas. You got Gary Johnson with the injury to his already broken nose and James on the bench with two fouls. So Rick Barnes, like I said, they got to do some work with the training staff uh, at halftime. Jackson straight away, not there. Abrams rebounds. Off the rim would have counted had it gone. And we are at halftime. Well, our star watch, Arthur, 14 points, 6 of 9. A.J. Abrams, 10 points, 4 of 7. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Holly. Coach, at times you said you don't like it when your team gets sped up. How do you like this pace for your team in the first half? Uh, I like it when we play fast. Sometimes we can get sped up when we catch the ball in the post or whatnot, but it's a pretty good college basketball game tonight. Your defense has been a question for you the last couple of weeks. What do you think about it so far tonight? I would say uh, uh, average. We, we did a decent job, but we didn't defend a three early at all. All right. Thanks, Coach. Okay, Holly, our score at halftime is Kansas 42-38. Now let's join Reese Davis, Digger Phelps, and Stacy Dale with the UPS Halftime Report. Bud Light, part of Rivalry Week, presented by Cisco. Tonight for the Sprank Irwin Special Event Center, 42-38 at halftime. The Kansas Jayhawks leading the Texas Longhorns. My question to you, DJ Augustine, 0 for 7 in the first half. How do you get him back into the fray? they got to have it. Yes, well, we know we can score because he's the second-leading scorer in the Big 12, but DJ Augustine is at his best when he's a pass-first point guard. If he'll get everybody involved in the offense and spread Kansas's defense, that will open up scoring opportunities for himself. Pass first, shoot second. Friend, right now, let's take a look inside the play brought to you by K Jewelers. Well, if you're a high school or junior college, uh, junior high school coach, Tivo this because this is how good teams move the ball. There's no ego on this Kansas team. Whoever's open gets it, and they try to get the best opportunity and usually close to the rim. Here are the stats in that first half. Well, the rebounding jumps out at you, Kansas, especially on the offensive glass, 12 offensive rebounds. Good balance by Texas. They've knocked down six threes, and that's kept them in this ball game. And let's check in with Holly Rowe. Holly? Hey, guys. Rick Barnes told me before the game his biggest concern was pick and roll defense. He said at halftime it's still his biggest concern. He said there were a few times we did a good job on it, we'd stop them, and then our post players wouldn't be in a good position on second chance baskets. He said we have got to concentrate everybody being in the right position on pick and roll defense. As for Gary Johnson, guys, he will be able to play here in the second half. They said that they can try to let him use that plastic mask that he was uncomfortable with, but they'll have to plug his nose up because they're trying to control the bleeding. Back door, and that's going to be an offensive foul called against Rush, and that is three on Brandon Rush. Ron, and so quickly you see Bill turn around and say, Sharon Collins, get your warm up off. Uh, with a veteran crew, I guess I mentioned this uh, at halftime when we were off the air, veteran crew, you can bet this will be very closely officiated the first four minutes of the second half. So that is huge, obviously, as far as the Jayhawks are concerned, to have Rush on the bench in the very first minute of the second half. Well, 
actually, actually got caught for a moving screen, and it's exactly what I thought. I think the officials, he, that's his second foul, Ron, is it not? Yes. I think the officials at halftime said to themselves, we let a little too much go in the first half. Let's grab control of this game early, and that is good preventive officiating. And inside to Jackson. Works against Ashley. Knocked out of bounds. Taken away by Texas. <laughs> Number five, Baby and James back into the Texas lineup. Only played three minutes in the first half. Got an early hoop. And then got two quick fouls. Augustine still won't go. Mason on the foul. Well, Chalmers is the glue for Kansas. And Justin Mason is the glue guy for Rick Barnes. Second on the team in steals, third in minutes, fourth in rebounds, does a little bit of everything. Take a look. Only 6-3. Finishes the offensive rebound. So they'll line up to do it all over again. So Mason completes the three point play, and we're back to a one point ball game. Kansas and Texas. Boy, they have played some dandies in this series, particularly during the regular season. Darrell Arthur. Boy, how good is he? All he has to do is stay out of foul trouble. 16 points for him tonight. 24 NBA scouts here as well. Not a bad uh, audition. And we got him back on the ball, Ron. James has to hurry. Shot clock is now at 10. Damian James falls down on the floor, and as they fight for it, possession arrow says it will stay right here. Six seconds on the shot clock. Damian James lost his footing as he, he went driving toward the lane, but it is Darrell Arthur who was uh, shaken up on the play. You could see him limping. The training staff did not come out to check on him. He looked over at the bench just now and said, I'm fine. Bounce pass, Mason partially blocked and he got the follow. Grabbed his own rebound. And at the other end, Arthur. And that's what Sharon Collins gives you. He gives you instant fast break opportunities. Damian James. And that's what we meant by a hybrid forward. He shoots 46% from three. Last year with Kevin Durant, he was the power forward. But you see his versatility. We are tied again, this time at 46. Chalmers back to Arthur for three. Not there. James rebound. Get the feeling, Ron. James is out of jail after those two early fouls. Inside the cut and knocked out of bounds by Russell Robinson. That's 26 seconds on the shot clock. You get the feeling that everybody is going 10 miles an hour faster than they're even actually able to do. And they're still playing very solidly. You know, we talked about being sped up, but they're playing on cruise control. Yes. Augustine dishes, Ashley jams it. 14 points for Connor Ashley. And that's Augustine's game. Pass first, the offense will come. Longhorns go back on top. Robinson with the high dribble. Chalmers falling away, and he was fouled by Abrams. Now watch Augustine. He gets a piece of the paint, 
There's the dish because he draws two defenders, and that's how you run your offense. Interesting tonight as A.J. Abrams came out on the floor. Uh, Kansas was already out shooting, and Chalmers made a beeline for him, and they hugged one another. They know each other well and a lot of respect for each other oh, for that matter. Absolutely. These guys have played against each other many times, and not just in Big 12 play, but so many of them in the summertime. You know, in fact, Ron, Augustine Chal uh, Chalmers and Sharon Collins were at the Steve Nash camp this summer all together. They know each other really well. Sasha Khan checks into the lineup. And Darnell Jackson. Well, Darnell is going to stay on the floor. And Collins guarding Abrams now. On the way to the hoop, Russell Robinson. It is Arthur that they have elected to uh, give a breather to with uh, 18 points, and Rush is going to come right back off the bench with those three fouls, and it will get him back on the lineup quickly. And with that, Russell Robinson will go to the bench. Well, wouldn't you agree they have seven starters? Yeah, there's no question. They, or you could even say eight. Yep. yep they, they, there's no ego. Abrams, no. Khan will rebound for the Jayhawks. Rush, long three, could not get it. James again with a rebound. See, James is already a factor in the second half after, after being saddled with two fouls. Well, you're right. Early, yep. He has, uh, he has made a difference here early on in the second half. Damian James, little give and go. And how about the bigs coming up with an assist? That's what we talked about, not being one-dimensional. It doesn't always have to go through Texas's guards. So the Longhorns go back on top by a couple. Collins off to Chalmers, lob pass inside to Jackson, and almost stolen by A.J. Abrams. Uh, everybody thinks it's Augustine who can dish it. But how about Damian James? Little pick and roll, give and go, and the finish. There's nothing to crush it, because truthfully, I'm better than y'all. This is weird. Speed of 48, the Texas Longhorns on top. But right now, let's take a look at who's hot. Brought to you by Quiznos. Well, Connor actually has been hot because he hasn't missed a shot tonight. 16 points. Darrell Arthur as well. And Connor actually, Ron, only two double-figure scoring outputs in his last 12 games prior to tonight. So this is a huge lift. And he's doing it from deep. 6'10", got great range. Young man from Houston, Clear Lake. Can finish at the rim. Remember, he redshirted as a freshman, so he's a fourth-year junior. He's got a nice little shiner over that right eye. <laughs> Rick Barnes said he might never have, has had a player that worked any harder on his shooting than did uh, Connor Ashley, and it's really showing that it uh, has paid off. Here's Chalmers. Drives along the baseline, pulls up, and he traveled. Wow. Uh, you got more on some specific uh, things for Connor Atchley in that Texas huddle. Well, guys, assistant coach Ken McDonald took a little time separately, just pulled Connor aside to give him some instruction on how he needed to position his body a little bit differently on some of their sets. It was really great to see their interchange, but more importantly, Rick Barnes and Huddle had a specific message for the whole team. The okay, Holly, great work there. Uh, uh, in the action, it was uh, Darrell Arthur who picked up the foul. And really some great hustle by Mason, who is terribly undersized, to be inside where he was and still came up with the basketball. When you, when you think of these two teams, and we know who the McDonald's All-Americans are, but you talk about Darnell Jackson, Connor Ashley, Justin Mason. These are the guys that make these top ten type teams even deeper because of the dirty work they do. Blue collar. Yep. Lunch pail, however you want to uh, label it. The type of guys you got to have. Like Russell Robinson right here. Absolutely. Looking for Arthur. 
Ran into part of the double team, could not get it to go, and there's rebound number four of the second half by Damian James. A great job by actually as he came over and quickly doubled. That's going to be Sasha Khan who will pick up the foul. That's his second. It'll be the fifth team foul against the Jayhawks of Kansas. So Bill Self wants a timeout. 14-42 left in our game. Texas 51 to 48. situation Texas 51 to 48 over the Kansas Jayhawks this has been a really really fun game to watch but I'll tell you what these two head coaches I thought Bill's kids in the first half not only had an answer for everything Texas did but they were really sensational in the second half coach Barnes has come back with some counters of his own really well coached well played well you try to take away each other's strengths if you can but sometimes the strengths no matter what you try to do can overwhelm you for three he got it just like Abrams you cannot give Brandon Rush any daylight 6-6 can really knock down that open shot that's 10 points for him now and again friend we are tied this time at 51 that's the seventh tie of the night They're switching now Rush was guarding Abrams and then he just passes him off to, to Chalmers as they switch out on the wing Mason not there and James over the back nope they're not going to call it they're going to say it is going to be KU basketball Brandon Rush quietly having another great year remember first team all Big 12 his first two years and he leads Kansas in scoring in the Big 12 and yet in their nine games he's only been the leading scorer in the game twice backs him in and the quick turnaround jump hook right there we mentioned the improvement of guys like Jackson and Khan over four years you see how much Kansas is is gambling as far as even bringing one of the bigs outside to try to double on Augustine. What they have to do, and this is a key to this game, is Kansas has to continue to show and uh, make sure that Augustine can't turn the corner and play north-south. They want him to go east-west. Augustine's so smart, Ron, when he gets a big guy switching out on him, he knows how to get to the outside of his body and pick up those fouls. Here's a number that's big. We are at the 13-minute mark. KU now has 16 fouls here in the second half. And the Texas Longhorns have two. Actually, with the screen out high. James, three-pointer. That's what we mean by a hybrid forward. We've seen him dominate inside on the glass in the second half and still the ability to step away from the basket. Texas goes up by one. Chalmers, strong move to the hoop. Blocked by James. Two-pointer would not go. One and out, and that's going to be a reach-in by Connor Atchley. Three fouls on him. So Gary Johnson checks back into the ball game. Sons mask. No mask. <laughs> this will not be Phantom of the Opera tonight. I'll tell you what, there won't be anything Phantom about it. He gets bumped here from the young man. He's got to be in a lot of pain to be playing with two broken spots in his nose. The difficulty for Texas right now when you guard Kansas, you cannot key on any one player. Right now they have five weapons on the floor. Abrams quickly on rush. Chalmers, three-pointer, not there. Tipped up, taken down by Gary Johnson. Johnson and James now give Texas some bulk.
Bounce pass into Gary Johnson. Short jump hook won't go. Darnell Jackson right there to pull down the rebound for the Hawks. This is, this is a hard-fought basketball yep. game. It is fun. And you know, the offenses are freelance, but there are team concepts. Nobody's doing what they're not capable of doing. Damian James, last year, he was the sidekick for Kevin Durant. Did all the dirty work. Now, his game is stretched. Fifty-four, fifty-three. the Texas Longhorns leading. And let's take a look at the standings in the Big 12 Conference to update you. Kansas, 8-1. and 7-1 is K-State. And uh, number 11, Texas, is 6-2. And, and a reminder, K-State will play on Wednesday evening against Pat Knight's ball club. Uh, that's where Hubert uh, Davis and I are going to be on Wednesday to see uh, Kansas State take on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And we've seen many an upset in Lubbock over the last few years. No question about it. In fact, as good as Texas A&M is, uh, it was the Red Raiders who handled them out there on the South Plain. Oh, yeah. Collins inside. They tried to do that in the first half where they posted up Rush right off a timeout. And let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, Bill Self told his team in the huddle, this is the time we have to be tough. We've got to get on the glass more. We've got to quit giving them a free path to the basket. He also looked at Sharon Collins and said, hey, we have got to have you start making some plays, guys. Jackson fouled by James. That's Damian it. James just picked up number three. What a great catch and finish by Jackson inside. This was not easy, but it happened because of dribble penetration. Take a look at Rush. Gets to the basket, and this is a tough finish inside by Darnell Jackson. I think Brandon Rush, Ron, is going to make a very solid pro because he does so many things well. Jackson misses. So KU by one, 55-54. We're about to go under 10 minutes left in this ball game. Well, Gary Johnson is not particularly comfortable right now in traffic with the ball. Chalmers could not get it. Taken down by Mason and almost stolen by Darnell Jackson. The lob inside. They battle for it. It'll stay with Texas. 27 seconds on the shot clock. Texas trying a little Kansas magic there. Trying to lob it up there. One of the keys now in the last 10 minutes is can Kansas keep Augustine out of the lane because that's been an Achilles heel for Kansas last few ball games. So Abrams and Augustine are scoreless this half. Boy, Sher Sharon Collins staring right at that belly button. Mason, pull up jumper. Air ball and a whistle and a foul. And it looks as though, is that Khan who pulled him down? Yeah, he, he had the takedown, and I think Curtis Shaw is right on it. Yeah, he did. He called it on Sasha Khan. I'll tell you the amazing thing about this guy's team right here. Also, KU, we mentioned way back about four minutes ago that KU had 16 fouls. They have not committed another foul to send it into the bonus situation. You know, the thing that strikes me about this Kansas team is how mature they have become over the two years. Sasha Khan goes to the bench. Three personal fouls on him. We watch these guys as freshmen and sophomores, Ron. And you know the fortuitous thing is Brandon Rush and Arthur shouldn't really be here because Rush almost went pro. The knee injury set him back. And Darrell Arthur almost left after his freshman year. So this is a veteran club. Collins at quick first step. Reversed wow. it in and scored. Young man from Crane High School. That's his only his first two points. His high school coach, Anthony Longstreet, will love that move. Guy's done a great job with kids in Chicago. Abrams, quick release, three-pointer on the way, couldn't get it. James on the follow. 
That's going to be against Darrell Arthur. That is his third. Oh, this is a to watch this move, Ron. Watch him use the rim now. That shields the shot blocking opportunity from Mason. He puts Mason in jail by deftly using the 10. If we both know the college may have as quick or the quickest first step of anybody in the conference. Well, he sure does. Well, we had a great high angle on that rebound. That was just a toughness rebound. It was Arthur and James's to get, and Damian just ripped that ball away. Second one on the way, he gets that one as well. So it's back to a one-point ball game, and James now in double figures. See what the Jayhawks counter with as this capacity crowd of 16,755 comes to their feet. I mean, even in the upper deck as well. Jackson lobs it inside to Arthur. Back out, Chalmers three, not there. Tip would not go. Mason knocked it right back into the arms of Collins. Can't get it. Well, they had a new shot clock, and Collins didn't need to force the action. Abrams did a good job of challenging. Very quickly, Russell Robinson uh, off with the warm up top and will come back out on the floor. That's a good point, Ron. His fatigue becomes a factor down the stretch. Remember, Augustine plays almost 40 minutes a game in conference play. Gary Johnson shot clock is at five and he was fouled. Tomorrow night on ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern, Michigan State faces off with Purdue. And at 9 o'clock for the SEC, Kentucky goes after Vanderbilt. Super Tuesday, presented by KFC on ESPN. Billy Gillespie's club quickly improving in the they SEC. Really have, yep, they? six and two. Patrick Patterson, one of the best uh, young big guys in the country. Ramel Bradley playing terrifically down the stretch. Johnson had that one rattle in and out. Chalmers will go to the bench. Rush will go to the bench. Russell Robinson checks in, and Rod Stewart will come back into the lineup for KU. You, you asked me at the very beginning, beginning of the game the difference between the two teams, and this is where you may see it, because Bill Self can freely go to that bench. You're now. right. And I noticed Rick Barnes was sitting there just as they were lining up for the free throw, and he was watching every move <laughs> that Bill was countering lamenting, against him. Yeah. Lamenting the fact that his bench is not as deep. Here was a difference also in this ball game. Texas started out at the free throw line eight of eight. Right now they're four of nine in the second half. Little zone now. Remember how well Kansas moves the ball. Skip pass. Robinson. Collins for three. Not there. Tipped by James of Texas over to Abrams. Well, the zone worked, and it also rested Texas. They didn't have to chase Kansas around very much on that possession. Under eight minutes to play. We are tied at 57. Good matchup here. Augustine just cannot buy one tonight. He is 0 for 9 from the field. Russell Robinson. Offensive foul. See. 7.28 left in our ballgame. Texas 57, Kansas 57. And we are tied at 57. And right now, let's take a look at tonight's game track brought to you by Cisco. And one of the things that's not up there is uh, DJ Augustine now 0 for 9. And combined with Abrams, they are 4 for 20, for 19 tonight. Actually, he's had a big night, particularly from behind the arc. And I think Augustine, Ron, I was going to mention now, uh, 5 for 22 on Saturday, 0 for 9 tonight. It's like a baseball hitter. A 300 hitter in a slump right now. Let me ask you this though. 
with with him not scoring from the field and with A.J. not scoring at all in the second half. Did you think Texas uh, could be tied in this ballgame with a team like Kansas? Not the way they've played lately. But remember early in the season this was a very well rounded club. So this is a good sign for Texas. Holds up, 15 footer, got it. Now, the substitutions that Kansas made, they got some shooters on the floor, and Texas, what? They've gone back to the man-to-man. They, -man. they recognized right away that the zone would be a little less effective. Arthur, not there. Battling inside, James with another rebound. And that last play on the offensive end for Texas was a set play to finally free Abrams. Damian James has nine rebounds in the second half. Rick Barnes, I guess you could say, intelligently kept him on the bench. With those two fouls. Same play again. This time, Kansas switches. Boy, Mason pulled down hard. And this was, uh, this was bait and switch right here, Ron. They ran the same play seemingly twice. And this time Kansas switched it and watch Mason slip right to the rim. Excellent execution. Well, the crowd is booing. Uh, and, it, and it was a hard foul, but I you could also see Darnell Jackson going, trying to help catch him, and then going immediately to help him up. Uh, there was no malice there, I I, I don't think. Well, he got tricked. <laughs> yeah, basically what happened, he got tricked and he wanted to make sure Mason didn't get the three-point opportunity. Second one on the way, and he got that one. So Texas back on top by a couple. Seven points for Mason. What a game. Under six and a half minutes to play. Now there's so many different ways you can go if you're Kansas, but this offense now is designed to go high-low. Russell Robinson off the mark, and it's going to be saved by Texas. Hit first by Abrams and then over to D.J. Augustine. Ron, they gave up on the post-up opportunities way too early in that possession. Well, Texas at home in the last six seasons, you see they have only lost six times. And folks, when these two clubs have gotten together, particularly here in Austin, we've had overtime, we've had everything. Shot clock is down to six. Augustine works it to the basket, and there's his first hoop of the night at the 535 mark. Well, he slid right by Brandon Rush. And we always tell a point guard, if you get even with the defender, you're leaving. If you're even, you're leaving, and that's what he did on that play. This matches the largest lead of the night. Now Rick Barnes set this up out of the timeout. He got Abrams the open look. Take a look. There's the catch. Abrams becoming proficient inside the arc. And then watch Augustine. He gets even with the body of Rush, which means he's leaving. Wednesday at ESPN at 7 o'clock Eastern, the Duke Blue Devils take on the Maryland Terrapins. Wednesday night hoops presented by Staples. And remember, for that Maryland team, and it happened in blue heaven, they knocked off North Carolina. So it's one of those things. It may be a Duke, but don't take for granted that the Terps are going to go in there mildly. Well, I agree. And Grievous Vasquez tying a Maryland record 15 assists in his last outing. Now that... <laughs> There is a sea of burnt orange, and there is one KU fan right there in the middle of that group. Showing her loyalties with the T-shirt. This drought by Kansas is now 4 minutes and 18 seconds old. Chalmers. You know, the one thing that's always been brought up about Kansas is who, who is the go-to guy. Collins has it taken away by Augustine. And now you can bet that Augustine will have the ball in his hands down the stretch. Under.
under five minutes to play. Screen out high by Ashley. He's going to take it to the hoop again, and that ball partially blocked by Khan. And on the follow, there's Mason. Remember when he went back into the starting lineup about six games ago, it seemed like Texas got their toughness back. Chalmers fouled on the way to the hoop. Well, this is a, this is a battle now because every play matters. You see the challenge at the rim. And then Justin Mason coming out of nowhere, coming from Amarillo to score. Fourth foul on Ashley. And Rick Barnes does have Gary Johnson on the sideline. If I were Rick Barnes, I might leave him in right on, you go to the TV timeout, get him back in because you don't want to waste him. Ashley will come out at the 429 mark. Jackson will go to the bench, as will Collins. And again, what Fran made the mention of is that very deep Jayhawk bench. And Bill Self has the luxury of keeping the more fresh bodies out there, really, the, uh, than does Texas. And if I'm Rick Barnes, Ron, I roll the dice with actually as soon as possible. We're down to four minutes. 64-59, Longhorns lead it. Longhorns burning a lot of clock. Inside to Johnson. Jump hook. Could not get it. Knocked out of bounds by Arthur. Uh, Curtis Whoa. Shaw. Yep. Curtis Shaw says it's going to go the other way because even Arthur reacted as if to say, oh no, what did I do? And Gary Johnson tried to make that jump hook over the 6'11 con from about 10 feet. Drives the lane and he got it. Well, we've always said, Ron, they may not have one go to guy, but there's one guy that loves to have the ball down the stretch, and that's Mario Chalmers. He's got nine points, and we are seeing him be more aggressive, taking the ball to the hoop here in the second half. He knows when to turn it up. Sasha Khan, he got against Augustine. Oh, going to take it. Followed by James. Augustine's at his best when he gets to the paint. Bouncer into Khan. Dishes to Arthur and he'll score. That's a really nice play. Khan saw that he had no way to get by James. Arthur now with 20 points. I don't think Khan would have made that play a year ago, Ron. No, I think you're right. And Johnson was right there as well. But he split the double team and passed the ball to get the easy one. Ashley off the bench, about to check back in. 2.40 to play. Texas 66 to 63. Shot clock down to five. And a reach in. Is it going to be Rush or is it going to be Arthur? And I think they got Rush, Ron. So we will take a timeout. 66-63 as we go to break. Damian James with the follow. Our situation is 66-63, Texas on top. And a reminder that this telecast is available on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. Well, as we mentioned, 16,755 of the sellout crowd here tonight at the Irwin Special Event Center on the campus of the University of Texas. And many of these fans have been standing the entire ball game, friend. And those students were outside for, uh, for much of today in the tents. 
Augustine, an 80% free throw shooter, misses. And in a game this tight, there are, yep. there's no room for error because Texas in uh, free throw shooting tonight, only 14 of 21. We chronicled it earlier that Augustine plays almost all 40 minutes in Big 12 play. Well, the timeout has been called by Texas with two minutes and 29 seconds showing on the clock. Well, 2006, the Big 12 championship game. And in that one, uh, Julian Wright is the man who took it over, and KU won it. Then last year, Kevin Durant, 37 points, but too much rush and too much Collins, and it was KU in overtime winning and also securing a number one seed. And as we look at both huddles tonight, the man in the second half who has really not only helped the Longhorns, but has helped thrust him uh, in, into the lead is Damian James. He did not have a rebound at halftime, and he has 11 in the second half to go along with 10 points. So 12 points total, double-double for him. Well, this Simply is, an incredible evening. He's a, he averages a double-double. He's used to getting over 10 rebounds a game, and his athleticism and toughness is a good match for this athletic Kansas front line. Here's a package on him to show you just exactly what the young man from Nacogdoches, Texas, has done. Well, he's improved his range over the course of his sophomore year. Remember, he was just a rebounding fiend last year as a freshman. But tonight he gives Rick Barnes a little bit of everything. And as you mentioned, Ron, all of it in the second half after early foul trouble. Here's another number that jumps out. On second chance points in the first half, KU had 13, Texas only seven. In the second half, it's 11 second chance points for Texas, none for KU. And you can credit Damian James for a lot of that. Texas doing a good job of keeping the ball out of the lane, out of Arthur's hands. Chalmers was fouled. That's going to go against Mason, his second. And so now 18 fouls against the Longhorns. One of the differences in this game tonight has been KU with the line. And look how well they have shot the last three games at the free throw line. And regardless of his 72% percentage, you want Mario Chalmers at the line in big situations. Chalmers missed the second one, and James with another rebound. Now, what Rick Barnes will do now, and he's done this all year, is he'll use Augustine to milk this clock. Wouldn't be surprised if they don't get very much more than his penetration into the lane, Ron. 67-64. Under two minutes to play. Abrams for three. That's off the mark. Mason is there to get the ball back, and they got a press 35. Now, I'm not sure if he nudged Rush, but he did a great job of sealing him inside that long rebound. And another fresh clock. Augustine, you can see the mismatch as Arthur has come outside. He smells it. Shot clock is now at eight. It's at seven. Augustine pulls up, shoots the jumper, air ball, and that ball went off of Rush's hand. He wasn't expecting the air ball. Now that's going to have to be reset to two. The clock has been reset to 35. You're right. Was, you're right. It did not draw iron. And you could see at the scorer's table, they concur. Two seconds. Now, every team has a play inbounds under for this situation. We call it a late clock play, late in the clock. We need to be able to catch and shoot it, and preferably get something even going to the rim. And Rick Barnes wants to call a timeout to set that play to make sure that they get their money's worth and come up with a score here because it's only a three-point lead over a Kansas team that, as explosive as they are, that, that's not nearly enough margin for error. Well, if you look at the rebounds by the two halves, 23-13 in the first half, 22-10 in the second half in favor of Texas. 
But that also is how close this ball game has been. On a reminder, tomorrow night at ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern, Michigan State will face off against Purdue. And at 9 o'clock at the SEC, it will be Kentucky and Band-Aid. Super Tuesday presented by KFC on the ESPN. If you're Kansas right now, you want nothing sneaky to the rim. Force a jump shot away from the basket. You see where Russell Robinson is right here. He's going to make sure that he takes away the rim. Got him open. Three-pointer on the way. That's an air ball. That's a shot clock violation. Perfect. Did not touch the iron. Perfect defense. They forced Texas to go away from the rim and then forced a contested shot. Crowd comes to their feet. Longhorns lead it by three, but KU with the basketball. Chalmers into the corner. Rush for three. That ball was partially blocked. And Augustine comes away with it. I believe it was Mason who got a hand on it. And they set a play up for the three. And as good as Russ shoots it, I guess that's okay. But that's really good defense. Augustine, you see the double on him. Mason, bounce pass into the middle. James is going to go to the line for a couple. And he's got a chance now to make this a two-possession game with only 40 seconds. Mason and James, Ron, you talked about the rebounding, but what they've done in the second half is they've given Texas some toughness against an athletic Kansas group. Now Bill Self wants a timeout, and both coaches will huddle with their teams, and I'll tell you, the chess game continues to go on. Texas by three, 40 seconds left in the ballgame. Beasley at Bramlage Coliseum. And then Beasley again, and this broke a 24-year drought. The first time since Bramlage Coliseum has been constructed that they were able. It's the first time that they've ever won in Bramlage Coliseum, their own home. And right now, that's their only loss on the season. I was going to say right now in Manhattan, Kansas, Frank Martin's club is watching this game. Because this will, this can't Texas win if, if they hold on, puts the Wildcats back in the driver's seat. And you saw them Saturday, Ron. What a great job Frank Martin has done with the Kansas State Wildcats. Well, they they are a very very tough basketball team. And I I know that Frank Martin knows they're going into very hostile territory on Wednesday. Down in uh, Lubbock. Just slightly over 50% free throw shooter. They'll shoot two, but you got to be very alert if you're Jackson and Arthur on the second one. He got it. Now Bill Self told us a few weeks ago they would not go through the Big 12, not only undefeated, but uh, thought they could drop a couple in places like Austin. Bends the knees, second one on the way, and he got that one as well. Five point Texas lead, 40 seconds left in our ball game. You might as well go for the two here if you need two scores. Chalmers, long three. He got it. And a timeout called immediately by Bill Self. And that only took about 6.7 seconds. Well, we talked about Mario Chalmers. He loves these situations. Little dribble handoff. Good screen by Arthur. And then watch him step up and elevate before James can get a hand in his face. Take another look. You see James almost playing the drive. Creates a little space for Chalmers to knock it down. So let's start with Texas. Well, the first, it, it, it's going to be Augustine, you know, handling the basketball. Do, do you uh, decoy with him and, and use somebody else, or where do you go? Well, what you try to do right now is you get the ball into Abrams or Augustine's hands, 
because they are your best free throw shooters. Both shoot over 80%. That's the first thing. But on the other side, if you're Kansas, you're going to try to trap the ball out of their hands and foul somebody like James, who's only 50%. But you cannot waste time, Ron. You're better off making this a possession game by fouling and putting Texas on the line. It's a difficult situation as far as Bill Self's ball club is concerned because there, it's a double bonus situation. So you can't have it a foul there no. and send them to the line for a couple. What you need right now is luck if you're Kansas. A little bit of luck. Once again, the standings. KU, that one loss against K-State up in Manhattan. K-State at 7-1, and one, and Texas trying to go 7-2. And, and we got 32 seconds, 32.3 on the clock. Well, these meetings are continuing at both ends of the floor. Now, Texas has just broken their huddle, and it'll be Connor Atchley who will pull the trigger. Anytime you see Augustine or Abrams away from the ball, and we'll get a wide angle here in a second, you'll see they want to come to the ball. If you're Kansas now, you're going to try to switch and deny any entry to the two guards, but you're going to have to foul quickly. Here they come. Here's Augustine. Yep. He lost the ball for a moment, and it has been taken oh, back by Augustine. He got it back. Abrams, and he is fouled by Chalmers. Bill Self is saying that they used more than 10 seconds. And you know what? The clock was at 33. What did I say? 30. It was, it was over, it was over 30, 31.9. And here's the problem. Bill Self is right because Texas, Kansas never came up with possession of the ball. You see 32-9 now. Now Kansas has to clearly have possession of the ball. And they don't really have it. So the see this is a 10-second violation. That's nine seconds nine right seconds, there. Nine seconds, they made it. My fault. Yep. Just got it over. Abrams. Well, we know this guy shoots 88, and he very rarely hits the rim. So it's a three-point lead, and should he make this one right here and make it a two-possession ball game, if KU has got some instant work to get done with only 21 seconds left in the ball game. Second one on the way, and he buries that one. 71-67. Russell Robinson. Chalmers. Long three. Air ball. What they are questioning was the ball tip, and it was tip. It will be Kansas basketball with 12 ticks left on the clock. According to the official. Arthur, left alone, scores the easy two. Now, Kansas has no timeouts. They have to foul right away. They don't want to foul Abrams. Chalmers with a foul, eight seconds showing on the clock, and it is a two-point Longhorn lead as he goes to the line. Very intelligently, Kansas did everything they could not to foul Abrams. Arthur with a foul, it's his fourth. Augustine makes it a three-point ball game. Kansas out of timeouts, so they need a miss here. Sekeman, he missed it. Robinson comes down with the basketball. Five seconds left, four seconds left, three seconds left. Chalmers gets the shot away, and he misses. it. Texas has upset the Kansas Jayhawks. Well, it wasn't a great look, but it was right there. Scramble situation, no timeouts left, and take a look. You know, and with this victory tonight and still lots and lots of more basketball to be played as the two teams shake hands here at uh, midcourt. This is the ninth season in 10 years that Rick Barnes has been at the 40 Acres, and he has had 20 win seasons. 
And he's also now 12 and 2 on Big Monday against ranked teams here at home. So our final score, Texas wins it in regulation, 72 to 69. Up next on ESPN Sports Center. For more on this game, tune into ESPN News for a post-game extra. I'm Ron Franklin for Fran Frischella and Holly Rowe. And our entire crew, this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Longhorns win in the upset. So long, everybody, from Austin, Texas. Sports Center is next.